Got it. Again, welcome in for FPHL Hockey on the Delmarva Sports Network, your home for local teams with big dreams. The streak is done, kiddos. Delaware had been on a three-month losing streak, but last night they got the lead off of their shoulders with a 5-2 win against the very team they're competing against. Hello there, friends. Zach Barnes alongside Kayla Santiago for this FPHL matchup. So glad you're here to spend some of your Saturday night with us. Kayla, this was a huge monkey to get off the back, but the fans here, especially at the Thunderdome, they have been waiting for a win for three months and finally got it last night. I mean, Zach, there's been so many close games that we've been able to see here on DSN, and these fans are just chopping at the bit for a win. The only thing that can make it better is that they're able to get a victory at home tonight. Back-to-back -back wins for the Thunder is exactly what these fans want to see on Saturday night. Yes, indeed. They haven't been able to win back-to-back -back games since 2020, all the way in the beginning of March, just before the COVID pandemic canceled the season and also shut down the nation. Two excellent squads in front of us, Elmira and the Delaware Thunder. We'll get the opportunity to take a look at some of those starting lineups right now, starting with the visiting team coming down from upstate New York. First and foremost, Chris Hunt, the winger, Tate Leeson in center. Nick Gullo is playing behind him on the left wing side. Then Nate Campbell and Chris Maratea on defense. Tom, Tom Prowlock is here also playing goalie. We'll pause here and send this to commercial break. When we return, the national anthem will be played and we'll get to action on DSN. Almost time for action here inside of the Thunderdome. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for our hometown Delaware Thunder tonight. 2.30 and 2 this season. Their second win coming last night against this very Elmira team. Danilo Malushkin on the left wing. Houston Wilson in center. Dennis Gafarov out right. Dmitry Daniluk and Andre Ivanov play defense. And yep, the constant of the whole season. Trevor Martin, a force in between the pipes, will start in goal. Somebody to talk about when you mentioned this starting lineup.
Houston Wilson leading this team in shots on goals with 118. He got an empty netter last night. Got to see what he can do in center. And I'm sure these Thunder fans want him to have another big night to hope to another victory for the Delaware Thunder. Yeah, Wilson this year certainly aggressive in peppering the net, but has only scored nine times. If he's able to finish things tonight, it could be a long bus ride back for the Mammoth. Gullo looks like he's going to swap in last second to take the center faceoff here against Wilson. The Thunder, the Mammoth, it's about to go down here on DSN. It's FPHL hockey, another sold-out crowd inside of the Thunderdome. Welcome to Harrington, Delaware. The Mammoth start things off. Campbell's got it, chases back for it, and now play begins to develop. Mammoth already on the offensive. Houston Wilson, though, back to chase that one around, clap it around the boards. Gafarov just missed the puck, and Campbell's able to secure it. Campbell presses on ahead. Tate Leeson, arguably the most talented player on this team, leads in all kinds of points and scoring categories as well. Rasmus Asp out in front on defense. Wilson, centering pass came in, but no one was there to receive it, and now it's Headed all the way back into the defensive zone of the Mammoth. Gafarov chases, gets the stick in there. Artea dumping it around. First fresh legs come on out for Elmira. Proudlock was able to glove that one down, put it on the ground, and now the Mammoth start things up again. Masterful hit there on the side. The Thunder begin to put things in progress. Jacob Wolf, now to Moritz, who takes a shot, went off of the knee pads there of a defender. And now skating with extreme pace, Richard McCartney took a shot on, and Martin was able to get to it and freezes. But a big collision there, and an injured Thunder player right now as McCartney is getting up slow. Yeah, but Trevor Martin, though, he's somebody that we've talked about all season long here on the Delmarva Sports Network, newer to this Thunder team coming in, just making a huge impact this season and going into the year even the coaching staff said that they might be able to stay in most of their games because of him 35 for 37 last night 94.5 and save percentage as well so he has been the real deal this season we saw a glimpse of it just right there very much so we'll get to see his brilliance even further jc moritz is going to glide to the locker room or so it looks right now taking a look He'll probably get checked out quickly over there by the athletic training staff. So got to see what the Thunder are able to do without their second line D-man and also a captain in this team in J.C. Moritz. Center draw here. Mammoth keep it in the offensive zone. But still continued play along the boards on the near side. Now there's an all-out sprint. Marquis Grant Mentee with it right now. Tried to do some dancing, but was unable to. He's a new addition for the Thunder. Just played in his last game last night. Had two points. Jacob Wolf behind the cage. Taking a look around has Eric Melso. Back to Wolf. Looking for the centering pass. Wasn't able to glide it in there. Great defensive play from Blake Cudmore. McCartney turns it over. Grant Mentee passes over. Melso the backhand. And it's corralled by Proudlock, who will freeze this thing up. Delaware looking pretty primed right now, though, staying on the offensive. And this new addition of Marquis Grant Mentee, Kayla, is big. Head coach Charlie Penns, or excuse me, general manager Charlie Penns was telling us, you know, it, he just adds a ton of speed to this roster. Yeah, as you mentioned, just really able to bring so much that they didn't have before. And he might be a key reason going forward just with his speed and his strength that they can continue winning games. This team now trying to turn the pages and turn it into a win streak. Elmira has had all kinds of forwards cycle throughout their program as we've seen the same for Delaware. Grant Mentee is just the latest addition to a Thunder squad that is the youngest team in the league and only growing and improving. Knifing offensive right now, shot goes in, it's blocked down. Wild wanted to go for the second chance attempt but missed it. Maratea forced to play it back. Now a quick offensive run. This is Austin Weber, takes the shot and it is corralled into the collarbone. Proudlock, once again. Right now you see the Thunder being super aggressive on the offensive side. Last night, 
three of their goals coming in that third period. Wouldn't be surprised here, Zach, if they want to try to take command of this game a little bit more earlier on so that they can sustain that lead going into periods two and three. Would certainly be nice. They got ahead last night on a very early goal just a couple minutes into the first period. Malushkin takes the shot and scores! Danila Malushkin, a constant threat for Delaware, has put them up 1-0. He must have been listening to us <laughs> up here. He must have an AirPod in his ear or something and listening to what we say because he did exactly that, just wanting to get the scoring started early for the Delaware Thunder. And what momentum they have right now to be able to come off their first victory in a long time after last night. And now just perfect penetration as they get their first goal early on. You can't get much better than that for goal number one on the night. No, and he targeted that expertly, was able to snipe that one through so quick our camera can't even keep up with the puck there for a second. Hey, back the other way right now, the Thunder are doing some interesting stuff on the offensive side. By the way, that the 12th goal of the year for the Thunder for Danilo Malushkin. Dimitri Daniluk clapped one in from the blue line. Campbell has to play it around the boards though. Delaware is looking poised. They're playing physical right now, Kayla. Nothing but good things. And that's what they need, especially as they get towards the middle of the end of the season at this point, feeding off what they were able to do a night ago and now really just pushing it up heavy, and the fans are loving it. Rocco Di Costanza checking into the game. First time we call his name tonight. He was the one to score that opening goal in the opening minutes of the first period last night. Grant Mentee has just been in and around, making a lot of plays happen. The Toronto, Ontario native, making a big impact and just keeping the puck away from the Mammoth early on. Delaware crosses into the offensive zone on the right. A quick shot attempt is redirected and brought around. That was Campbell able to do that. But now cutting in along, McCartney fed along the wings. Clapped out by Melso, who's got a nice opportunity here and a two-on-none opportunity that goes high and up out of play. Melso's shot was pure, though. He just missed that one away. Yeah, and Eric Melso from Philly. I'm sure that he'll have some plans tomorrow night after trying to get a victory <laughs> here, formerly at Morrisville State College, related to former Red Wing Bobby Ryan, 5'11", 220. But something you're seeing from this Thunder team right now, of course, the scoring early but also just the penetration on the offensive side, and they haven't let Almira get into any sort of momentum on the offensive end. And old Mo can be a fickle man. So far, it's fickleness only hurting Elmira and rewarding Delaware. This is a new addition to the Thunder here who just lost the puck, Toivo Hanakanen, the Swedish player as the Thunder are in. Weber shoots high, it went off the glass. Regrabbed though by Oli Venstrom. Played around. A little bit of neutral contact there. Puck goes off of the official after ending up with Eric Melso. And looks like Elmira's getting caught sleeping here a little bit. Daniluk gains the zone. Dumps it around. But it is retrieved by Cudmore. But Houston Wilson using some treacherous stuff to get to it. He absorbed a big hit there. But still in the offensive zone. The Thunder are working with it. Ivanov fires up and it goes into the netting. Now we get a little break in the action for the first time. Much deserved for a number of players on both sides so far. Danilo Malushkin, the lone goal scorer. Always love what he's able to bring to the table. The Mozahaisk Russia native. Also played professionally in Hungary and Latvia too, Kayla. Yeah, and coach is saying he's like the Willy Wonka of stick handling. Just always making crazy work for the opposing team. And you saw it right there. I mean, we didn't see as much stick work, kind of just that slap shot a little bit, but he really is able to snipe it through and throw those defensive off guard. So seeing him being able to get going is all good news for the Delaware Thunder. All good news for our officiating crew thus far. They haven't had to raise a hand just yet, but of course it's very early. Will Fannin, Forbes Mann, Chris Montalvo, and Joe Testa are officials this evening. Yeah, and last night, 60 penalty minutes between both of these teams. So pretty hot tempers on the ice. Haven't seen that too early right now, but wouldn't be surprised if this gets a little chippy. Officials doing a great job so far 
of making sure they don't have that happen. Especially if Delaware goes up multiple goals. The, the frustration could come out from this Elmira bench. They are fourth in the Empire Division. Delaware is fifth this season. Elmira 11, 20, and four. Face off, won by Gullo. But it is repossessed by Danila Malushkin, who kicks it along the boards. Houston Wilson pursuing Hunt there for a second. Rasmus Ath tried to field it at the blue line. It crossed back over. Now fields it again. Taken away very quickly, though, as McGuire will dump it along the side. And it goes back to Ivanov. Delaware begins to reset. And this is something, Kayla, that the Thunder have struggled with all year is repossessing the puck in the neutral ice. So far, they're winning that battle, but we are going to get the offsides call as it may have been Danilo Malushkin. And oh boy, those tempers, they've got them early here. Maybe he spoke too soon a little bit on that last call from last night. And Thunder trying to go up a little bit more, as you mentioned, Zach, just doing better of what they were able to do statistically all season so far in this one. But Elmira also just bringing that competitive nature. You gotta love that about hockey. Both teams super, super competitive on that side of the ice. We're waiting to see here if there is a penalty. Indeed, there will be two penalties assessed for the Elmira Thunder. Both of them, I believe, are going to be under the category of roughing. Nick Gulo was the first one to it. They may put Malushkin in the box here for his involvement, and they are. So we're going to get these penalty minutes straightened out. But Tate Leeson and Nick Gullo, two of the starters for Elmira, are firmly inside of the glass. Danilo Malushkin could be over there as well for his involved role. So we'll wait for the official decision. If that's the case, it will be four on three hockey. An unconventional set, especially just five minutes into the first period. But that is very well what we could end up with here. I'm just trying to maybe succeed the minutes, as I mentioned before, like last night, 60 penalty minutes in total. So both of these teams, as you mentioned, kind of in that four and five spot right now, the Thunder rocking off that momentum. And Elmira, if you're them, you don't want to drop another one to this Delaware team. And tensions are high, and we saw that right there. So these penalties are actually going to be offsetting. Officials are still kind of congregating about this. It looks like they're going to bring it back to center ice. And there will be no man advantage anywhere. So these are all offsetting penalties for these guys in unsportsmanlike conduct fashion, we believe, to be the call. We'll get some confirmation on that regardless. The Mammoth have started things back up. Ends up with Grant Mentee, lost his feet. Swiped at it there for a second, but it was unfortunately not to be. Grant Mentee testing the right skate out after that. He just looked like he fell on one of the banana peels in Mario Kart. Yeah, and Tom Proudlock has really also been this guy for the other side too in Almira. Great lateral movement with Dave's awkward positions. And Right now, I mean, he's been putting them all night, Zach. Almara hasn't been able to get anything going on the offensive side of things, and the Thunder have been pressuring him so far in this first period. That they have. The pressure's gotten to him once. We'll see if it does again. Elmira wins the draw. The faceoff won by Noah Wild, and now they're struggling to get it out of the defensive zone. Lots of swarming here from the Thunder, who reset. Dimitri Daniluk plays it up ahead. Now with Grant Mentee, takes the shot. Stick save and a butte. That comes from Proudlock. De Costanza out in front, moving along the blue line. Wasn't able to corral the play. That was great defense in there from the Mammoth. Campbell up ahead. Now Dakota Seaman plays it across. Campbell tried the one-timer. It didn't work out for him. But the Thunder unable to clear right now. Shot goes through just by the skate of Rasmus Asp, who is the first one to it. Drags along the boards. Moves it up to Ivanov. And De Costanza, back come the Thunder's wingers. Grant Mentee has been no shorty in taking shots today. Feeds in on the inside. Jacob Wolf tried the backhanded pass that was intercepted. Now possessed and taken ahead by the Mammoth. Love the speed that Delaware is playing with tonight. It's something that fans have been begging for to see, and now they get it with... Some nice additions and guys like Oli Venstrom, Grant Mentee, and Rocco Di Costanza. Yeah. 
Elmira, big shot opportunity came there, but just missed away MJ Merkel. And as it's played off the side of the boards, on that near side, tough to see up here in the broadcast booth, isn't it? Yeah, pretty tight up here. I got everybody who wants to cover the Delaware Thunder, but right now, Amira kind of taking a page out of the Thunder's playbook, trying to pepper them on the offensive side, but the Thunder doing a good job of getting back defensively. That they are. Now a couple turnovers consecutively at center ice. Cycle it back around, Andre Ivanov is there. And Ivanov has been beat on a bunch of fast breaks this year. Yeah. He needs to keep distance between himself and the counterattack chance, but so far tonight really has been keeping up with that. He's a great quarterback kind of behind the second blue line, so to speak. Wilson centering pass, Grant Mentee missed it. Asp has got it back, it'll go into the netting. But, but to go back to that for a second, I, I just think it's kind of always important to have someone back there. Ivanov is not ever really in the box score. It isn't scoring points, but it's just been the kind of guy to lay down that big hit. But Kayla, I'm glad you brought up the breakaway point. It's been unfortunate for him to just be caught a skate or two behind, but that's sometimes what you get when you get a big body out there. You sacrifice some speed. Yeah, and sometimes you need those guys that are going to take the physical hits because we've seen more times than not, especially in games here on DSN, those big hits cause a turnover and cause good things on the offensive side. So He's been able to play his part so far on the Thunder, and they found ways to have other defenders utilize their speed where his might lack just a little bit. Feed on to Chris Hunt. Speed is certainly on here, Kayla. Centering pass goes by, and Asp quickly switches to skating backwards. That was a veteran-type move from the youngster. Yeah, and right now, Myra just not on the same page. No, and unable to complete these passes to set up their scorers. Here comes Danila Malushkin. Hunt able to retrieve the pass off of the boards. Long pass up ahead. Now ends up with Leeson. Skates around awkwardly. Great pressure from Daniluk, who's able to force the turnover. Repossessed by Di Costanza. Delaware seems a lot more sure of their passing. Of course, that was the broadcaster's jinx right there <laughs> as the puck got off the tape of Malushkin. Pressing ahead. Mammoth working alongside the boards, but it is repossessed there by the Thunder, but now played up. And an opportunity that just went wide. Stavros Soilis, who had a big goal last time out for Elmira. Skating ahead. Full head of steam. Puck played around there. Just went a little bit far. And now there's some battle along the boards. Houston Wilson able to come up with it. Feeds it along. Just taking a look at Toivo Hanakanen absorbing those big hits out there and just welcoming it as part of his game. Feeds Malushkin, puck goes down low and frozen by Proudlock. And on the other side for Almira, they were peppering the net a night ago, had double digit shots in all three periods, but couldn't get once to fall. And it's kind of like deja vu right now. You can tell the Thunder did their homework and that they are constantly contesting those slap shots or any shot by this Almira team because it's been just wide, and Martin has, of course, had to keep his eye on the puck, but not really do anything crazy right now on Armeyer shots a little bit off goal. Especially with Delaware doing a good job possessing the puck in the offensive zone. This team, it seemed like at points earlier this season, would cross that blue line, make one pass, maybe get the shot off, and then it was headed back the other way. But tonight, multiple shot opportunities and lots of passes. It's got to come from some unselfish play here. Yeah, and if you're the Thunder, that's something really good to see because you talk about coming into this season, you're welcoming everybody back. You don't have to deal with COVID anymore. You're dealing with a lot of different guys that are just trying to learn how to play together. And maybe last night was the turning page for this team. They play up until April, so to, still a ton of time left in this season. And if they can keep that momentum going, it's going to be a good rest of the year for the Delaware Thunder. But so far right now, just what you mentioned on Zach, it's been the best we've seen tonight so far in a little bit for this team. And some of the goal scorers from last night, guys like Rocco Di Costanza, Eric Melso, and Malushkin are recent additions to this program. So hats off to Charlie Penn's owner of this team and his general manager, Lou Santini, who's also the head coach. And just making some high quality acquisitions as of late. And that's sometimes all you need. 
to allow this team to get over that hump. Youngest team in the FPHL, but haven't been playing like it this year. Quick break after Delaware had won the draw, and we are off to the races. Dakota Seaman was leveled by Andre Ivanov, and we've got a penalty coming our way. Believe it will be for a slash here. And Andre Ivanov is headed to the box right now. Maybe it's Weber. They're pointing to two different guys here. Here's the replay, 93.5, the beach is bringing it to us. Yeah, and you mentioned Ivanov. We were just talking about just the hard hits he gets earlier. Just a tough little blindside play right there coming from the Delaware Thunder. They're bringing it all in this game so far, though. Don't want to necessarily get into the power play trouble, but with that being said, their physicality is just up a level tonight. First power play opportunity for the Elmira Mammoth as Ivanov is in the box for two minutes due to a slash. Weber able to clear. It'll go back down, and Delaware gets a second to breathe. Not that they need it, though. They've only been playing for a couple seconds. Fed on along now, here come Elmira. Tate Leeson going to hunt. No soup for you, says Dimitri Daniluk. Knocks this one all the way back down to Pradlock. We talked about earlier the Delaware Thunder kind of missing their passes earlier this season. They weren't able to miss as many passes today, but Elmira right now, they're just not communicating well on the offensive side, and the Thunder is making it extremely hard for them to connect. Yeah, and love the defensive presence that has come from the new acquisition. And Hannah Kanan, who was able to clear initially there as Wilson flicked it up and back around. A minute and two seconds left in this power play. Skate on. Big play opportunity and just missing the net was Campbell. If his backhand was there, this game would have been tied. Merkel tries one from the point. Repossessed, though, by Toivo himself. Big hit across the center. Martin goes down and looks like he's banged up for a second. And now we've got some physicality in front of the net here as the puck is fired all the way down from Proudlock who says, hey, let's go. Let's get this thing going. A few fights breaking out there. The Thunder and Almira kind of diving at the same time after Martin was able to make that save and then just a little bit of talking back and forth. Yeah, we're going to get another look at this, and thank goodness we do, because <laughs> there's a lot of chaos here among the ice for some of these players. Martin is just getting reset right now. Got to put the trapper back on and the helmet, but here's our second look. It's coming our way. If you can see right here, able to grab possession back, and really just the thunder pushes Almira into Martin. And I think that's where Martin's a little bit shaken up at the moment. We're going to get another look. There's a lot going on in front of the cage. And they are asking 13 to get in the box here. Elmira. And he is comfortably into the box. That is MJ Merkel. And they're explaining things to Nick Gullo there, the lead center man. By the way, love Gullo. He's all of five foot six. 160 pounds, but he will, last time out here, he went directly into the face of an opponent. Much bigger than him, and that opponent, of course, was J.C. Moritz, who at six foot five was a bit taller for that fight. <laughs> hey, he's got ice in his veins right there, not afraid of the big moment. But right now, the Thunder just trying to even out this power play and a really good job defensively on that stand as well, making sure Elmira couldn't get into a rhythm because right now on the offensive side, the visitors just unable to do so. So there's some issues here with the scoreboard right now in the properly assessed penalty. It looks like it's gonna be four on four hockey. They're waiting for the change here. But I'm wondering what the penalty Ivanov had just 43 seconds left in his penalty. I think that's what the issue is here, is they have to reset his clock. Regardless, two minutes coming for that aggressive play around the net. So we got four on four hockey for the next 43 seconds. That two minute penalty against Merkel. Ivanov has 43 seconds left to serve, at which point the Thunder will go up 5-4. So there's my best attempt to explain some chaos to you here. <laughs> Be nice if we had a public address microphone on these refs, but maybe one day. 
Thunder have it in the offensive zone. It was played back by Menti, but he had nothing there. Stevens in pursuit. But nothing going. Hannah Kanan goes over to Daniluk. Daniluk goes back to his new teammate. And they begin to press things up ahead. Ten seconds left for Andre Ivanov inside of the box. When he leaves, he figures to go to the bench pretty quickly so a winger can come on. Three seconds left. Delaware is now on the man advantage for the next minute and 17 seconds. But right now it's possessed well by Soilis, who posed with the shot. But it missed wide. Stevens corralling it. Elmira knows their role here. It's called stall, stall, and stall some more. Yeah, with just about a minute left, that's exactly what they're doing. Weren't able to get anything going on their opportunity in power play. Thunder, though, trying to not let that happen. And the Thunder have numbers here as Danila Malushkin is moving in, goes around the cage, tried to dump for Asp. But there was nothing there. And by nothing, I mean the stick of a very eager Nate Campbell to make a play. Malushkin goes back up top to Ivanov. Takes his time and lost it across the blue line. Everybody's got to get back. Malushkin catches that one with his skate. On the far side, plays off to Wilson. Less than 30 seconds to go in this power play opportunity. Wilson lost the stick, was looking for the slashing call. Official says that one was clean, though. Figures to be one last chance here for Delaware as the pass is received by Ivanov. Plays over and across. Now has Gafarov. Goes to Malushkin. Does the dancing backhand opportunity. Just missed the cage, and it was drawn off there and taken off its moorings for just a second. So Delaware needs a quick win on the draw and a quick shot to make this a power play goal. They've only got five seconds remaining here. Yeah, and Almira doing a really good job of getting back so far. Still five seconds to go, as you mentioned, Zach, but Almira not really able to get anything going on the offensive end so far in this first period, but defensively, ever since that first goal, they've been able to shut the Thunder down pretty well. Eric Melso's in center against Gullo. Ben Strom is able to receive the win from Melso, who's probably been the best face-off acquisition for Delaware. Shot comes in there. Hannah Kanan had it bounce back to him pretty much directly, and Weber's able to dump it back in. Nice hit from Gullo along the sides, though. Repossessed by Hunt. He'll bring it up and gain the zone on the near side. Hunt tried to make a pass over there, but it deflected. And Austin Weber, full head of steam, moves into the offensive zone. Melso's there with him and misses that one as he steps over Gullo. That was a little Allen Iverson type <laughs> moment there. It was. Delaware Thunder reaching into the AI moment. Nothing but confidence right now for this Thunder team in period number one. Hunt ahead. Tried to play it out. That's Justin Laporte who... Thunder fans, I'm sure you recognize that name because he was just here two weeks ago, but now he's a member of the Mammoth. Reset around. Pass from J.C. Moritz was a risky one, but now it's up and across. Delaware is into the offensive zone. No icing is called here, even though it was called for by Proudlock. Laporte missing the pass. Asp will dump it back in, and Jacob Wolf skating in hard to pursue. Mammoth begin the counter. Wild plays up to Seaman. And Laporte missing it there. Played alongside. Wolf caught it with his back trailing skate. The offensive attempt unsuccessful for Delaware once more. Rocco Di Costanza's pass was intercepted. Mammoth gained the zone, but quickly turned it over themselves. So some frustrating offensive opportunities for both coaches in Lou Santini and also Mo Levac for the Elmira Mammoth. Grant Menti chasing after it, tried the centering pass, no one was there. Wolf receiving a big hit from behind in on him and he dropped to his knees hard. We could hear those knee pads bounce right off the ice. And right now the Thunder kind of losing that offensive rhythm they had earlier in this period. Yeah, Passes aren't as crisp, but Elmira has been playing a lot better on the defensive end of things that they have quicker to repossess as another opportunity is going to come down from Cudmore. Kicked away by Martin, who then used the stick to flick it away. Grant Mentee 
Possesses, gains the blue line, brought it back over, and now will exit for a quick line change. Malushkin in pursuit. And now things get back going with Elmira. Played on and across. Now they're moving with a whole head of speed. Jelensky fires up top. And it's no good. We mentioned Elmira's defense kind of turning it up a notch now after that first goal has allowed. The Thunder doing a really good job, though, of also getting back on the defensive side of things. Right now, offensively, the passes aren't connecting as much, I'm sure, as they would hope. But they're helping Trevor Martin out a little bit, and that's exactly what he needs right now as there's 317 left in the first. Very much so, Kayla. It was a nice little offensive push there in the end by Ricard Jelenskis, who figures to be one of the youngest players on the ice tonight. His birthday, April 1st, 2001. Not to date some of you at home, but the Riga Latvia star played in the EHL with the New England Wolves for the last three seasons. Now he's up in Elmira. So staying up in the northeast of the continental United States. It's got to be such a culture shock. Some of these guys to come over from Eastern Europe, Russia, etc., and then end up in a beautiful place like Harrington, Delaware. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It's it's very, very different, but hey, I mean, they're playing the game that they love and that they want to play at the end of the day, and we've been really able to see a lot of these players play well, whether they've been with this organization for a little bit and came back after the COVID or that they're just brand new on both sides of the ball, all from different places, but able to play the game that they want to. Houston, Wilson, and Gullo are going to go in center once more. You know, I think hockey fans on Del Marva are just happy to have an opportunity to be able to watch somewhere out here on the professional level. Yeah, I mean, we talked to Charlie Penn's really after COVID happened, and the fans were just absolutely devastated that they couldn't be around Thunder Hockey. And now that it's really the first year that they're full steam ahead, they get to cheer on this team. That was a really close shot from Toivo Hanakainen. But it was kicked away. By Proudlock. Maratea possessing here for the Mammoth as they try to work it. Interception, though, from Gafarov. Gullo. Fed it back across, and Rasmus Asp was there on the interception. Malushkin now stick handling. Trying to work it through. Cuts hard. Goes to Gafarov. And the big shot in from Dennis. Came with a whole lot of power, but it was easily corralled by Proudlock as that one found his lower chest. You can tell right now this offense of the Thunder, they want to get one more through before the end of this first period. As I mentioned before, three of their goals came last night in that third period. They able to get five overall and beat this team a night ago for their first win in a little bit. But they know it might take a little bit more than that and to start scoring towards the end of this game to be able to come away with another victory. First win in over three months. It's hard to imagine, but these Thunder players, especially some of the constants, Trevor Martin, shots on from Delaney, missed away, but they have had to be a part of that three-month journey. It had to feel like total relief last night. It's a tough one at that, but also this team really has been in a lot of their games. Yes. And something I think that the Thunder faithful like to watch, even though they haven't been able to win as much as I'm sure they want to, they're able to be in a lot of games and learn from these moments. As we mentioned before, the youngest team in this league. So a lot to learn from this year, but have been competitive in almost all of their games this season. They're competitive in this one so far and ahead, which is always nice, but we have seen the Thunder carry many a first period lead into period two, and that's when things get dicey for them. So we'll see if Delaware can play the long game here as the draw from Wild had to be deflected away by Martin. Mammoth in the offensive zone, but Rasmus Asp is able to clear this one out to Ivanov, who's moving up the ladder to Weber. Now to Melso. He's got to chase that one down. Had his stick slapped away for a moment, though. And back on the offensive, Dakota Seaman and the Mammoth. Shot from Dakota ends up in the knees of Rasmus Asp. Fed on across, back to 77. Tries to do some dancing, does it extraordinarily well, but then his backhanded pass was turned over. And 
We've got a hand up here for a delayed penalty. Is it going to be for a trip? Waiting to hear from an official or see any sort of movement. No, it doesn't look like it. Just a quick stoppage in play. Icing. That's what was called. <laughs> the near side official had put his, uh, his hand up first, which is pretty unusual for that to happen. But regardless, time arrow ticks onwards. Laporte tried the shot that went up into the netting. All the Mammoth were ready to crash the net after that opportunity. Yeah, and if you're the Mammoth right now on the offensive side of things, you want to try to net one before the last 40 seconds is over to get some momentum going your way at the end of this first period. Ever since the first goal, the Thunder has been pretty back and forth. Merkel tried the shot from the blue line, goes wide, then a secondary opportunity from Leeson. Wasn't close to connecting either. Delaware back with it. Wolf tries a slap shot. It was kicked away at the last moment by Proudlock. Leeson possesses, allows his team to clear the red line and now gain the zone. Asp taking a big hit there from Hunt, but no problem. Delaware still with the puck. Ivanov stopped on a dime, tried to play that one through. Leeson's stick caught it in midair. Now played low by Ivanov to Wolf. Grant Mentee skating ahead. And they're okay to just keep it there. End of the first period, Delaware with a 1-0 lead. All kinds of shots, but none more important than the one from Danila Malushkin. Stellar stuff here in a first period of FBHL hockey. Stick with us. We'll be right back here on DSN.
everybody's favorite game in Harrington. Uh, these things, uh, <laughs> bumper rafts, boats, etc. We do have a winner, which is huge. He, he's doing some donuts right now, some celebratory spins. Really electric stuff in the number five car right there. Seems like it's hard to navigate on ice. Yeah, I'm not even sure. It looks like they might have like two controllers by their legs a little <laughs> bit right there, but that's easier said than done. I feel like I don't even know how to go from right to left or steer, but always good entertainment here during the breaks at Center Ice Arena. Yeah, that game, a lot of fun. It's also been a lot of fun for the Thunder thus far to hold a one nothing lead against the Elmira Mammoth. They're seeking to win back-to-back -back games for the first time since 2020. And that would be welcome for the entire crowd here tonight, especially those who couldn't make it out last night for the 5-2 win over Elmira. That 1-0 lead right now from Delaware has been preserved basically at all three levels, Kayla. Really great stuff offensively in terms of pressure, speed. The defense has just not made any mental mistakes, and Trevor Martin has been a reactive genius. And I think the biggest thing right now, we talked about the offense early on in the first period, but the biggest thing to me watching this is the defense right now because there hasn't been that many slip-ups to the point where Trevor Martin, yes, is still having those saves, but he doesn't have to go completely out of his way to get everything done and he's not a one-man band over there the defense really backing him up so far here tonight in that first period and it's been an all-around game from the Delaware Thunder and we'll see the biggest thing for them is can they keep that up for the rest of the contest and if they do I mean I see them coming out with a win here tonight because so far in that first period they've shown a lot more than we've seen throughout the season so far. Very much so, Kayla. It's encouraging for the Thunder faithful as the Zamboni zips around here. Let's take a look at the highlights from the first period of action. Starting things off in between the pipes. All the replays brought to you by 93.5 The Beach. You guys should listen to that. This was the big save from Trevor Martin and the injury to J.C. Moritz, who looks like he hit maybe the back of his head on his way down. We did see him a bit later on in action, though. Yeah, and this turned that defense into some offense. We were just saying before that the Thunder really want to get something going early on, and they were able to do exactly that, and they haven't looked back since that goal. No, they have not. Danila Malushkin striking again in just his 13th game for the Thunder has made a massive impact. 12 goals across those 13 games. Even more impressive for the young man from Russia mentioned he scored last night as well and he's going to be a big difference maker for this team as we keep going through but he's been able to do a lot of shots on goal there as well and wouldn't be surprised or expect him to take even more and see another one go through as we get through the second and third periods he plays with a ton of skill and just the okay ability to know that you got to take risks in this game and he does a great job of that. This was a bit risky that we saw here, but just kind of an incidental collision. Thunder fan, though, maybe holding their breath as they saw Trevor Martin down on the ice. Yeah, Trevor Martin's a guy that you can't afford to lose, especially with the momentum the Thunder had a night ago, and they're trying to get another win here this evening. Trevor Martin, for a second, looked like he was down, but was able to get right back up and continue on in this game. It looked like the defender and the, the Thunder kind of just colliding into Martin right there. And I think he just needed to take a second to breathe it all in and make sure he would be okay. We thought Malushkin was going to go near post here. He opted for a pass to Rasmus Asp, who could have maybe redirected, but it was intercepted by a mammoth defensive stick. Toivo Hanakanen fired that one in, had it sticked away. One of his few shot on goals here in his very short Delaware Thunder career. Just his third game with the program here in Delaware. But got to like what the 26-year-old is bringing to the table right now. Played over in Finland for a little bit. Need those bruisers back here, Kayla. You do. And games like this where the Thunder, we know that they've been in a lot of games and not able to win them. But you need guys that are going to put it all out there, get a lot of shots on goal, and become close. And just really the biggest thing right now that the Thunder are doing, really pressuring the goalkeeper. And they're making the defense work more than the Thunder's defense has really had to work so far tonight. Just constant, constant pressure, and that can tire them out no matter, no matter how many lines they throw out there. So Delaware just continuing to go at them, and they can't let up at all in the second and third period. No, they cannot, but will they? 
That's always the question. I don't know. You, you have to watch <laughs> to find out. Duh. Fans are going to grab some snacks, refreshments, et cetera, et cetera. We'll do the same here on the Delmarva Sports Network. Step aside for a brief moment, but when we come back, we're talking about stats from that opening first period, players to watch out for, and also what's on tap for the Thunder next weekend. All of that and more. Coming up here on the Delmarva Sports Network, this is FPHL Hockey on DSN. Thunder with a one to nothing lead. Four minutes remaining in intermission. What's going on there, hockey fans? Zach Barnes alongside Kayla Santiago right here in the Thunder broadcast booth. Kayla, a win last night. So far, the vibe's pretty high two nights thus far with this 1-0 lead, courtesy of Danilo Malushkin. I mean, the atmosphere is here from the fans, but it always is. But you can tell the Thunder right now just really had a different mindset coming into this yeah. game, whether it's feeding off the momentum from a night ago or maybe they're really just starting to figure things out because we've seen – all around, they've been able to do a lot of really good things. But we've also seen that so far in some of the games this year where they start out really hot and then they kind of lose it towards the second and third period. So for them, it's all about just keeping that up. But, I mean, we've liked what we've seen so far in the first period from the Delaware Thunder. And I'm sure that they want to have another victory in their pocket. As we mentioned before, three months since their 
last win before last night, and what better way to get back in that column with back-to-back -back victories. It would be stellar, would be their third of the year. That's a number. Let's go buy some other numbers right now. Statistics from this opening period. Almost kind of identical, dare I say, Kayla. Wait for them. Hey, there they are. So Delma uh, Delaware obviously standing out with the one goal to none, but pretty much everything here is right about even keel. Yeah, and I think that right now, Amaro is just really able to figure things out just on that defensive side after that first goal by the Delaware Thunder. The thing about Almira is their shots have really, really come just after that. And both sides have been doing a good job defensively. Both goalies have really shown up tonight. The penalty minutes, as we mentioned before, 60 a night ago to six right now after period number one. So it's been a pretty even game so far. I would say the Delaware Thunder, though, are just a little bit more crisp on all around things, something that we won't see in the stat sheet and it won't show up. But right now, they really look like they're just on another level. Now, that also has to come with outscoring your opponent. And if you're the Delaware Thunder, you want to come out in the second period of play and try to net another one so that Amira can't knock things up at one apiece. We'll see if they're able to do so in the second period coming your way in just a moment here on DSN. Delaware with the 1-0 lead. Can they keep it? We'll find out soon enough. Stick with us, Thunder fans. We'll be right back.
You know, perfect timing rarely happens on television, but that's what we got here. Opening face-off of the second period, won by Houston Wilson. The Thunder repossess. Zach Parnes and Kayla Santiago here for FBHL Hockey on the Delmarva Sports Network. Kayla, we like what we saw period one from the Thunder. Already here in period two, they are building the possession game. And they're just doing the little things right. And, you know, people overlook fundamentals a lot of time, like the stick work right here coming in by the Thunder. But they've been able to do a lot more crisper things, whether it's on the passing, the stick work, or just keeping the puck in their offensive zone. I like the amount of time that they've spent on attack. It's been surely influential. Leeson took a shot on Trevor Martin there. That one at point blank range. But it was deterred. Martin's got to have some Kevlar under those pads there. Trevor Martin, a bad, bad man. Don't want to go full force at him because more likely than not, he's been able tonight to shut everything down offensively for the Mammoths. Dimitri Daniluk tried a backhand pass there that was frozen easily by Proudlock. A pretty solid first period was just beat by Malushkin for a fraction of a second. Draw one by Elmiro, but chased down by Delaware there. McCartney danced along with DiCostanzo. Fans getting very involved over there. Doing some screaming, a little banging along the glass as is tradition. No trip there as Stavro Soilis went to the ground quickly. Di Costanza, zone entry from the left. Nothing there. Played on and around. Now Wolf retrieves it, but it's taken away by Soilis. Tried to find a nice pass of his own, but Jacob Wolf did some intercepting of his own. Now we're back in the offensive zone for the Thunder here. Jelensky and Wolf getting after it. Excuse me, the defensive zone. I forgot we switched sides. Pass over to Wolf. Had it for a second. Di Costanza thought he had an opportunity, but it was not to be. But what a great centering pass from Marquis Grant Mentee. And now he tried a shooting opportunity, said a four letter word afterwards because it didn't go in. Instead, frozen by Proudlock. Yeah, and Proudlock really not going to get a lot of off him. 90% save percentage right now so far this season. He's done a lot of good things tonight, especially because they have been able to have so many shots on goal. And this year, he had a knee injury for a while and it was able to come back. So he's another guy that's coming back off injuries and just trying to do what he can. Right now, I think even though the shots on goal have been quite even as we saw in our stats during the intermission period, the Thunder offensively have been peppering a lot more and he has held his own. Love his commanding of the cage overall. It's good to see him back at full strength for Elmira. Intercepts, slap shot from Wild goes up high. Seaman wanted the second chance opportunity, but instead it's flicked back and down by Weber, who clears the blue line. Then it's flicked up and caught very nicely by Toivo, doing his best baseball impression. Drops it down. That one went all the way down and will be an icing retrieved by Thomas McGuire. Elmira really just can't any, get anybody in that attack zone right now. They're settling for those outside slap shots because they can't get any penetration going in close to on goal. And once again, I said this in the first period, the Thunder just doing such a good job of getting back defensively, even when things don't go their way the other way. Right now, Delaware just kind of outplaying them on all cylinders. Have to survive this offensive assault. We've seen Nick Gullo be extra poignant on faceoffs, but so too has Eric Melso for Delaware. Who gets this advantage here? One by Melso, picked back up by TJ Delaney. Weber off to the races. The speed demon decides to dump it back in and go to the line change. Head to the bench. Fox played on ahead. Asp was able to stop it at the red line. Goes all the way back towards Martin, who freezes with Tate Leeson there, skating at the doorstep and making a little snow cone right at his foot. Nothing Martin can't handle right there. Once again, Almira just not really able to get any pass. <laughs> Defensive zone, they've got to get busy, trying to give them more confidence on their side. 
Slap shot opportunity that just missed wide. Martin would have gotten beat. And refs are gonna wipe things off here for a second. I believe it's gonna be for the cage. Just coming off of its little stand there for a second. Officials are shoring things up about that. They have made sure that the foundation is set. Building can resume. Houston Wilson and Gullo, part two. Gullo wins that one, but Asp was able to get to it. He sent it right up into the netting. And the Mammoth are arguing that that should be a delay of game penalty. See if it's called. Oh, Asp is very upset, but... ...on the way. was there and I think if they were playing in maybe an arena with no netting like that there that's a penalty that doesn't get called regardless two minutes begin for the Mammoth to strike neither team able to get anything on power plays in that first period can Elmira change it a little bit here with the advantage and Delaware this season on the penalty kill has just been okay it's 71 percent this year all kinds of cycling around now from the Mammoth. Leeson dumps off for Campbell. Charges up, fired on on the inside. There was a huge open gap, but J.C. Moritz fell down. He's taken a couple big hits tonight. Elmira still in on the offensive zone. Leeson possessing. Malushkin trying to do some battling. Andre Ivanov poked it away from him and uses the backhand to clear the blue line. Reset here for Elmira. No change of the skates for them. Leeson dumps between his legs. Campbell, Leeson, opportunity, scars! On the far right side, Tate Leeson has equalized this game just 56 seconds into the power play. And that's what having the advantage right there is all about. Not enough defenders on the side for the Thunder. Nobody to get back. You kind of leave Trevor Martin on an island. And the Mammoths taking advantage of that opportunity. Now all locked in at one. Just great passing. The dump off from behind, then back to the middle. Little one-two punch right there and able to get the job done. Yeah, Martin had to play direct center of the cage because as you said, Kayla, he was solo dolo. It was up to him to make that kind of play if he could, but was unable to. We have a tie game, 15.47 to go here in Center Ice Arena. Delaware is no stranger to having the lead and losing it. It's all about how you respond to things in life, ain't it? Yeah, and last night we saw that the third period was their goal heavy period. Ricard Jelensky did a ton of dancing there, may have hurt his forearm on his way down. He had almost evaded everybody as that puck is sent up and into the ceiling off of a hard shot from the lefty Eric Melso. Here the Thunder, you have to have a little bit of a short memory and make sure that you're continuing to get back on defense like they were able to do in that first period. Focus on the momentum that you had a night ago because they know now that this team is beatable. They were able to do it. And it's just about getting focused once again and not worrying about what they were able to do on that offensive side. Just a little bit of confusion there about who was already existing on the ice for the Mammoth. De Costanza. Going to go on the inside here against uh, McCartney. Couldn't see his number at first. Apologies. Never mind. Not McCartney. <laughs> Instead. Draws one by Delaware. Wolf in front, shoots it, and scores! Jacob Wolf, if you blinked, you missed it. What a stellar play from the man from the Czech Republic who's found himself in the first state of Delaware and now has a very pivotal goal, his third of the season. And he was all smiles after that one was able to get through. Let's take 
yet another look. And this is what I mean, have a short memory and build off momentum. Just barely getting off what he wanted to, was right in front of the net, figured out where the goalkeeper was going and made it happen. And just like that, the Delaware retake the lead. Wolf had to knife that one down out of the air to bring it back down, what soccer players would call a great touch, and then shot right up into the top right. How about it? From Peace Czech in the Czech Republic. Wolf, his father Ray Deck, a master of world roller hockey coach. Ice hockey does pretty okay for number 16 here in Delaware. Mammoth had some momentum. They do not any longer. It's pretty impressive by the thunder too of what we've seen so far this season for them to answer back just. Two minute though. Teams are gonna get the chance to talk things over but more importantly, the thunder on a power play. Their second one of the game, they'll have a minute 49 to do so. By the way, another point scored by Marquis Grant Mentee. In two games, he's got three of them. Yeah, and right now, once again, if you're the Thunder, I mean, this is the perfect opportunity to net yet another one through and try to make this lead even more. We've talked about the Thunder just coming out with a different demeanor in this game. A little Things a little bit sharper, a little bit quicker, a little bit more precise. And they're already showing that once again in the second period. Now it's about playing a full game, but Right now, you can just see different momentum in this home team, and the crowd is loving it. Not loving it? The Mammoth. Head coach Mo Levac over there. Looks like he could be in an Old Spice ad between his hair and beard combo, but Coach Levac and company, they have struggled to find an identity themselves this season. Levac actually playing a number of games on the ice this year for Elmira an FHL and FPHL veteran since 2010. Played with the Binghamton Black Bears and across the Danville Dashers too. May making mayhem in the SPHL as well and interestingly enough, he's related to former San Jose great, Joe Thornton. But player coach Levac, mainly a coach these days, he has not played for a couple of weeks. Delaware sets things up as they begin their first true offensive on this power play. Houston Wilson, nice zone entry from the right. Asp feeds it across De Costanzo. Up against the boards. Played the backhand pass as he lost his footing. Daniluk passes across the point. It's back to Dimitri. Now Wilson. Good puck cycling. That went up in the air, but caught well by Daniluk. De Costanzo now. Off the boards, back to Daniluk, a drive, and that one goes wide. Malushkin receives it, goes back down and around. Rocco Di Costanza. Wilson once more, tried to go in. That one took a bit of an awkward bounce, though. Malushkin plays along the backside. Merkel and Wilson race for it. It's popped up, back towards Daniluk, who's trying to use his skates to get it, and a potential opportunity for Tate Leeson, a shorthanded one. But he was held for just a moment by Rocco Di Costanza. Enough of a legal hold to make that one count. Great poke check along the point from Rasmus Asp. And here comes Wilson. Lost his own footing, but still is able to gain the blue line. But Malushkin was first. Offsides. If Wilson hadn't lost his footing there, Kayla, that's a two-on-one. And with Malushkin being the receiver there, could have might as well just been a goal. Yeah, off to the races right there. Wilson just unable to keep up on the far side. And right there, the Thunder with 31 seconds left in this power play. They have to get busy. That they do. Not a lot of time left. Still keeping it in the offensive zone. Melso was able to play it off his chest there for a second. Now he's tied up along the boards. All kinds of stick play coming in there, but it is received by McCartney. Now one is sent all the way down to Trevor Martin, who is able to see it into the glove, drops it behind the cage. One last power play chance, if that, for Delaware. Ole Venstrom, though, is gaining. Plays it over, shot opportunity, comes on in, and hits into the chest or the skull. We do have a hand up in the air, potentially maybe some goalie interference here. 
Proud Lock is doing all kinds of stuff there to stay limber and loose. Yes, goaltender interference is the call, and Oli Venstrom is unfortunately the man headed inside of the box. We get another look at this here. Yeah, and if we take a sneak peek here at what just happened a little bit, can't do that. Kind of holding him down a little bit. Just a collision. I don't think he purposely meant to turn around there, but kind of backing up his way and then realizing he was just too close to the goalie, and that's going to get called one too many times. I'm sure the Delaware Thunder coming away empty I think on that, that power play. I think that's also kind of a, uh, dare I say, Oscar-winning performance <laughs> from Proudlock there for a moment, although I didn't take the hit, so I'm sure it was brutal. But Okay, so we had a Thunder power play. Now we have a Mammoth one. Down a goal, they move up five on four again. That's Oli Venstrom serving the two for goalie interference. Mammoth take their time behind the cage. Houston Wilson with Stevens and, oh, Houston Wilson able to poke the puck away from him. Played all the way down. Gonna force Martin to chase for it. He plays it alongside, has to get back inside of the cage very quickly. Wild is there. Comes down, Stevens shoots, and it goes up and into the ceiling there. And that was all the defense of Wilson right there, too, just making sure he got in front of that stick and not allowing a clear slap shot. And once again, this Thunder team doing a really good job of getting back quickly. And you can tell the guys that they were able to put in this lineup, their quickness is paying off. Speed kills just about every sport. Figures to do the same on the ice. DiCostanzo and Gullo fight for the faceoff. Gullo wins that draw. Leeson receives it. Now plays it up to the point. Merkel, Gullo skating in. Merkel's going to load this one up and fire it inside. Martin thought he had it in the glove, but it had just bounced out, keeping the Mammoth power play offensive alive. Hunts now with it. Getting a little bit stagnant here are the Mammoth, but are just setting things up. Asp got to stick to it. De Costanza backhand, gonna clear this one out. Still 48 seconds to work with though here. Thunder still leading, got that second goal from Jacob Wolf. Just mere seconds after Elmira struck. Leeson. Gained the zone, but it was quickly turned over. Danila Malushkin is back to chase things, though. Proudlock, though, making that effort for nothing. Hunt. Possessing. Back with Leeson. Gullo. That's quite the size contrast with him and Dimitri Daniluk. Puck is knifed down by Malushkin. Goes to the backhand, and that will effectively kill this power play. And end this thing. Lucian and Wilson, a really big reason that that power play didn't go in the mammoth's way. Very good performance by then, being able to get back and not allowing the mammoths to get anything easy. But wait a second here, kids. Venstrom is going back inside of the box for two more minutes. I don't know what the call was. But But the power play continues for the Mammoth. Two more fresh minutes. Holy Venstrom, we're gonna get that here for you guys. Too many men, the official call on the ice. So he must have entered the box early there, or left the box early, so now he goes back for two more minutes. Forces the Thunder defenseman to work hard here as Martin collapsed his knees to make that one happen and then cleared out by Daniluk. Anna Kanan calling for a replacement really quick. Wonder if he took a shot there. Shot comes in from Austin Weber, who's now a little bit tied up. Rocco Di Costanza trying to be a part of it. Delaware's got even numbers, though. Spinning back around. McCartney tried the backhand. It was not to be. And it goes all the way back down. Still a minute 10 here remaining. For Oli Venstrom to be freed of his post. Wolf, good neutralized interception. 
Feet are part of your body too. Might as well use those skates out there. And now the Mammoth press ahead. Chris Maratea. Cycles across. Hunt put everything into that, but in the process lost his footing. Stavros Soilis. Goes to Merkel. Back to Soilis. Thought about it. Goes over Stevens. And that cross shot prompted some real gymnastics there from Trevor Martin, who's able to make the save. We're inside of 25 seconds on the power play. Leeson's with it, dumped it back over the blue line. Two great penalty kill chances here from Delaware. The crowd is fired up. Houston Wilson possesses and figures to hold this until the time runs out. Big hit there on Merkel. The two of them getting after it. But it is repossessed. Rasmus Asp gains the zone. Fired it on in, but Proudlock got to him. And now we've got some talking going on. Yeah, I think that initial hit coming from NJ Markle. Him and Wilson were getting after it just a few moments ago and going right back to it. Can we get another look here, Kayla? I don't know. I think our eyes have got to be able to tell us the truth, hopefully. Here's a look at it. Wilson, yeah, doing a little bit of that shoving there. So there were the tensions. They were high. And then when it came back down the other end, just a quick tap opportunity for Rasmus Asp, and then the hand thrown in there late. Officials deciding to go to a quick timeout inside of 10 minutes rather than have these tempers keep popping off. Yeah, it looked like Asp there too, just... Frustrations might be high there, not getting the shot off that he wanted and kind of bringing back already a frustrated MJ Markle. So Thunder doing a really good job defensively and really back-to-back -back power plays is what it ended up being, but we'll see what the call ends up being here. Super Bowl Eve on the Delmarva Sports Network. FBHL hockey is the perfect appetizer.